Welcome to the top eight, the week of the second anniversary release, our second tournament within that week. We have starting off Branded Despia versus Makanko. Makanko has been boosted up by Diablo Star. We also have a bunch of Snake Eye players within this tournament. Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. We're going to Ohime activate to search our deck for the Great Ceremony, which will be activating a special summon our Hime and also send a Makanku card from our deck to the grave. We're going to be hit by Max C here, which we could still at least end up on a single disruption through the Ceremony sending a Rondo, which gives us the ability to take control of a monster from the opponent's de uh, field. What are we doing with the Squeak Knight? Uh, you're freaking me out here. Okay, we're not doing anything here. We're just setting up a rivalry, which will also be another disruption. And then we're sending, as I said, the Rondo. Okay. I don't know why the Squeak Knight had to come in here, but we now have the ability to take control and the ability to negate not only a monster or negate a spell. So negate a spell or a monster and take control of monster. Those are our two disruptions. It can negate Super Poly, by the way as long as we have it on the field, as long as we activate it before Super Poly, then it can negate Super Poly. We have Branded opening, discarding our Thrust to summon our Alibur. You know, Thrust would have been activatable. We know that the Ohime is very likely going to activate. This is the spell card negate. We are now negating. We're gonna chain Super Polymerization to not get negated. Yeah, that works. We now don't get negated. And our two disruptions are now nada, zero. Zero disruption and disrupt nothing. Damn, we got clapped. That's that's a big problem. Masquerade, rivalry, disrupt nothing. Rondo, steal nothing. And it looks like we have a very easy lethal damage play. We're going to be adding a maxi to this which we couldn't do so because of the Super Poly really screwing us up big time. Banish from the Grave, come forth Lubellion. Lubellion cannot attack, but we got 25, 25, 5K. What do you know that's 3K? Mirror Jade, the main boss monster. Exactly 8,000 damage per game. And just like that, Makanko will be choosing to go first or second. A lot of Makanko players want to go second, but Morsaki is different. Morsaki's Makanko deck wants to go first. Let's do it. Let's go. Reinforce our army, grabbing our one card I sold. Sublimination Knight equipping a squeak from the deck just to make the I sold. Renat is generally the card you summon from the deck with the I sold, but as you saw, if you have access to the Ohime, you could then get to Renat through a different way. We are going to be adding the Makanko Dance in the Graveyard back to our hand with the effect of the Renad. Then making our Baron to floor with Ohime and Oliver. Then using the Ceremony to send from the deck to the grave a Ha Rei. As we then link off with the Renad and the I Sold to make a Promethean Princess to reborn a fire monster from the grave to then further link this off into an Ambla Whale. Now we can use the Makanko Dance to... What is the Oliver doing to the Baron to floor here? If it's equipped onto the monster, what does it do? The monster is uh, can't be targeted by card effects. Okay, very nice. Untargetable Baron to floor. With the Makanko Dance, we're going to be dancing the Ha-Rei onto the field, triggering her effect to search her deck for another Makanko card, the another equip that is. Very well done. And uh, this big play was just an untargetable Omni Negate plus the Promethean pop a special summon monster. And like, really, that's it? Yeah, that, that is it, that is it. Two disruptions. Fusion deployment is gonna deploy our Albaz onto the field. Does not care that you're untargetable. We're going to fuse with you anyway, but the Promethean princess by popping the Albaz will make it so you can't fuse with it. No fuse, no Baron to floor being dealt with. So we still have our Omni negate. Triple Tactics Talent will be forcing as, even though it's untargetable, again, we used the untargetable effect of Albaz and the untargetable effect of Triple Tactics Talent attempting to take control of it, forcing the responses of both the Promethean and the Baron to floor, resulting in us having now zero disruption as Branded Despia has their full way with us, as we now have a Branded Fusion that will not be negated. Sending from the decks of the grave to make our Albion to then fuse into a Mirror Jade here. 
activate, banish the Albaz plus another Dark Monster. We're going to be discarding the Nadir Servant for this play. Discard, come forth, Mirror Jade, non-target monster banish. Tribute our Albion to then trigger its effect during the end phase, summoning our Lubellion, setting up into the back or our Branded Lost, waiting with our Cartesia effect to then trigger the Branded Lost to search our deck for an Albaz monster. Gangrenal sending from the deck or extra deck to the grave. Let's see what we send. Sending a Titan Clad, which will then summon during the end phase a Quem. We have the Mercurio for a monster negate. During the battle phase, we're also going to be sending a Rinbrum, which will be further disruption with the ability to reborn an Albaz that we don't have in the graveyard at the moment. But Quem being summoned could send the Albaz from the deck to the grave. Cartesia recycling back. And uh, what happened to our Mirror Jade? The, uh, oh, we suicided into the Baron to floor. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I completely missed that. What the heck? Sure. As we now have the Banishment to reborn the Mirror Jade with the Quem or the Banishment. So within the draw phase, before the Promethean activates to reborn a Fire Monster in the Grave, we're going to summon our Albaz with Rinbrum to then fuse with the Promethean Princess. Let's get to it. Discard the Cartesia as it's not needed. Come forth and make our Mirror Jade non-target monster banish, triggering the loss to search, triggering the Quem to reborn the Cartesia. It's, so with the non-target monster banish plus a monster negate plus reborn from the graveyard infused with either field, we have about three disruptions. We have the Water Makonko card to return the Mirror Jade back into the extra deck to then summon a monster from the deck by fusing with the Mirror Jade and the Gangrenal, we're going to make a Dragos Tepelia, which sends the water on the Mirror Jade leaving the field. Thus, the effect of summoning from the deck does not happen. So what we have here now is we replace the Mirror Jade non-target monster banish with the Dragos Tepelia. Triple Tactics Talent returning the Mercurior back into the deck, which also was no longer activatable at the moment. But the Banishment can reborn the Mirror Jade to then have made it activatable. We now have a Gear Freed, the Oliver equipment onto the Gear Freed. Now the Gear Freed gains a disruptive effect of when a monster effect is activated, we can negate. So we're able to negate a Dragos Topelia. We have Dragos Topelia and Banishment right here. Those are our only two disruptions. We're now summoning our Ohime. Ohime with an Axe of Fool in the graveyard can negate any monster in the field. Banishment attempting to reborn the Mirror Jade and then fuse with either side of the field. What are we fusing into? If we lose our Ohime, it's not going to be good for us, as we just lost it. So we now have Mirror Jade Disruption plus Dragos Topelia, and the Gear Freed can negate one of them. We have also the Disruption of the Promethean Princess on the summon, taking out our Gear Freed to take out your Mirror Jade. Very nice. As we now reborn a monster in the graveyard, and the Dragos Topelia is not choosing to negate, interestingly enough, allowing them to add a double-edged sword. What are we doing with the Dragos Topelia? We're just waiting. Activating the Makonko Dance to reborn a Huli, which, oh my gosh. Do we lose? I, we can't stop this. We have the ability to negate, but the Huli is untargetable, and we have a double-edged sword with a 2,000 attack or higher monster in attack position. It needs to be in defense. Because we summoned it in attack, we now lose. This will only boost the attack against Makonko. A monster in attack position is death. As we see here, untargetable, can't negate, can't negate. Also doesn't cont negate continuous effects. Equipment onto the attack position. And just like that, double reflected battle damage with the double edged sword for game. Brandon Despia had everything. They had so much disruption and they lost even with an active disruption on the field that they just couldn't even activate. Quamon summon sent from the deck, a fallen Albaz of a monster leaves the extra deck from either player. So let's say Morsaki summons to the extra deck, an Ice Soul that will trigger Quem to reborn the Albaz to fuse with the Ice Soul. Now the Hugh Lee is searching for a rivalry and this is quite interesting. This is a lock. As long as you control the monster equipped to this card, your opponent cannot use the effect of a spell trap or effect monster that targets one monster, including their own monsters, except the monster that can't be targeted if there's an equipped card in the field. So, untargetable and you can only target the Huli. We're going to call by, banish and negate the drone Lockbird. I do not think so after we have added our rivalry. 
card has not left the extra deck yet. Now, the Quem reborning the Albaz is a non-targeting effect. Ash negating the Ohime's ability to grab a ceremony, then summon itself onto the field, which would have been our monster to fuse with with our Albaz had a card left the extra deck within the process of that. We're just gonna simply reflect 1500 battle damage here. So not being able to target and the rivalry could take control or negate a monster or negate a spell. So we're actually in a decent set. Like this is a good setup here. All right, Ohime gets searching, grabbing the ceremony, which we were attempting to do on the previous turn. Squeak Knight is going to equip onto the Hugh Lee, why not? Send the equip card to special summoner gear freed. And with an equip card in the field, we can negate a monster. We have Ohime being summoned from the hand, then the Great Ceremony will send him a Konku card from the deck to the grave, which will be a card that the Ohime can interact with. Ohime in the battle phase, equipping the Rondo onto the Quem to attack directly with the Gear Free to then put the Quem into the back row, then Rivalry equip onto the Makanko, a double-edged sword for 2k, 2k, battle damage, lethal 8,000 damage. Earl, I promised you that you were okay if you just kept your monsters in defense. I'm sorry, uh, not against Morisaki. We have Pathfinder, not imperming the Pathfinder. Is that correct? I don't know. Uh, holding on to imperm, maybe we could imperm the Unicorn instead or hold on to it for the Arise Heart even. Could be a decent play. It, it pretty much turned out that just holding on Imperm for a rise, if a rise making all your cards being banished actually affects your deck is, you know, good enough. Rise Heart because we have a Kashtira, Special Summon, banishing a Big Bang as we then link this up into our Shang-Ri. Ending our turn, we could summon a Fenrir during the next standby phase. No Rise Heart anyway, not even a big deal. If we activate a monster effect, the Fenrir will trigger to then banish a face-up card in the field face down. Grabbing our limited to one diameter. Shangri being triggered because you banished a card face down with Small World. What the heck? You banished multiple cards face down, so wow. Small World double triggers Shangri. That's something. Subtraction is subtracting off the Fen Rear. Also, we'll be triggering the Fen Rear if we want to banish the subtraction off the fields, which will then trigger the Shangri again to lock up another zone. Is it worth it to get that early lock? Maxi getting fingered by the called by. We're not gonna be dealing with that. Do we do it? Yes, we do. Triple field spell, field lock. Is this messing up our link plays or what? All three zones behind the extra monster zone have been linked, have been locked up. Special summoning Sigma after sending from the deck to the grave, triggering the circular to search our deck for the super factorial, which can't even summon a Laplacian because we don't have room to summon three math mechs from the grave. We still have our normal summon, which Diameter can't reborn a monster from the grave at the moment because there's not enough room. Were we supposed to summon the Alambert in the extra monster zone? Addition, but boosting up the Alambert to summon itself to then link off into the Splash Mage. At this moment, we could whip out the Diameter. Diameter reborn the addition as we then further link it up into Transcode Talker cannot summon a monster onto the field due to the Shang-Ri. So we're going into Heat Soul instead. This messed up our Update Jammer Transcode Lethal. Wow. Now, we don't have Update Jammer for Lethal, but we still have an Access Code Talker, but the Shang-Ri could protect itself per material it could detach instead. So it's gonna be a bit to destroy. Detach again, banish in the grave, pop again, double protect. Do we have enough? We're out, that's it. The Shang-Ri completely ate both of the Access Code Talker destructions. To battle we go, wiping out the Shangri, open up, opening up our main monster zones here. Now the Axis Code Talker can banish itself to take out cards like Skill Drain, or also if you're desperate, take out something like the Fen Rear. Now the Super Factorial is activatable here, and uh, where we do have the Gamma to help negate, but then gets negated by the. Okay, so uh, this is interesting. There was a mind game here. There was a hope that you would have done this while we had Imperm in the hand. Had you kept the Imperm in the hand, we could have used Imperm and, well, it would be better to Gamma and then negate the Gamma, then Imperm, I, I mean, okay, let's start this over. 
you make Laplacian, you activate Laplacian, you gamma the Laplacian, you use diameter to negate the gamma, then you use the imperm to negate the effect of the diameter negating the gamma, and then you get fully negated by the imperm. Uh, but there's a field spell. You're right, you're right. There's a field spell. But uh, that's if uh, they did not have a field spell. Anyway, but uh, that would have been cool, right? So now you know. That's why. I was just testing you, and now you know. Thank you very much. Now, the gamma is still activatable, but it's going to be negated, as we said. And we just made the Laplacian that much better, as it can now send the impermanence. All right. Get detached and send two cards. Gamma negate. Negate the gamma, as we said. And then this is where we would have impermed if we could have, but the field spell screwed us. Goodbye, and get sent in. Now, boy, was that unlucky. That was uh, not cool at all. Damn, the Gamma would have been activatable again during the next turn. But we 50 50 discarded the Gamma. Even more reason why we probably should have just held on to the Imperm in the hand, maybe, to decrease that likeliness of discarding the Gamma. And uh, let's go. We don't know that there's a Driver in the hand. That wasn't revealed, but <laughs> does not matter. We're going for it. Game one going to Math Mac, and it's questioning my reasoning for playing Cash Tier in today's tournament. If it could only beat Snake Eyes, it at least got you to the top eight. But is this where your journey ends as you're now going to fall to Math Mac? We have just an Ash. Ash versus now we're under Shifter, which will really mess up our ability to use cards like Circular. We can't get Sigma into the grave. We can't Diameter Reborn from the grave. We do have Ash still activatable, even though it gets banished by negating the Theosis, which would have been summoning from the deck, probably a Unicorn, grab Birth, then Rise Heart, banish Fenrir, then Special Summon Fenrir with the Birth. But because you used a monster effect, we can look at the top five cards of your deck. Banishing your limited to one diameter, it's now gone from the game. It's over. Damn. And this is a really interesting situation. You know exactly what the top cards of their deck is. It does not get shuffled back. It goes back in order. You banish the diameter, and then the Rise Heart banishes the three cards off of the deck. So you know that they are going to be drawing guaranteed into Effect Veiler. Yoink. Shang-Ri summoning our Unicorn. <laughs> wow. Didn't even need to summon a Rise Heart to win. That's something. Well, well, well. So did we, like, we kind of, like, lost to Shifter, huh? Shifter got us? Whoa, we do have Shifter, semi-limited. Ain't no way. Now, Circular State, send a Math Mech from your deck to the grave is a cost. If it were an effect, it would still work, but because it's a cost, we can't pay the cost. We're screwed if we can't cross out Designate, negate the Shifter, which we definitely don't play into our own deck. So do we auto-lose to Shifter again? Ain't no way. Oh, well, uh, we didn't shift her in the draw phase, so I guess we're fine. <laughs> Thankfully, did not shotgun the shifter. Damn. Okay, you know, um, is that an issue of not toggling on, or uh, we were actually purposely waiting? Huh. We now have the circular search for the equation. We have Ash to negate the small world. Cross out designate to negate the negate. We do have imperm on top of that to negate the Allenbert. Alan Burt would be searching for a super factorial or a diameter. Grabbing another Ash. Huh. We used Ash to negate Small World, and then we cross out to negate the Ash, and Small World was to search for an Ash. Okay, sure. This is a uh, situation, huh? We end in just like that. Ash negate the pot of E, limited to one, be gone. But then we have Pot of P. As long as we didn't draw, we could Pot of P on top. Limited to one, limited to one, Pot into Pot, ain't no freaking way. We're digging deep, and the Pathfinder is full combo. You Valor, but you can't. Valor stops the combo, but it must be sent to the graveyard by a cost. The Ash does not have to go to the grave, the Valor does. We lose the Shifter again. I can't believe this. 
We got the planet field spell. Let's speed this up now. Uh, is again, the, the Veiler's just chilling. Can't Veil, can't Veil. What the hail? The Osis onto the Unicorn. After searching for it, special summoning a Fenrir. Fenrir grabbing the Rise Heart, special summoning the Rise Heart. To battle we go. The Fenrir had to be summoned while in defense, into defense, that is. Unicorn on the attack, looking into the extra deck, wiping out the Axis Code Talker. It is gone, no more access to you. Banishing the Big Bang, plus banishing three more cards off the top of the deck. And we're leaving the field just like that. We're not gonna go into the Arise Heart. We are no longer under the effect of Shifter though. But what are we reborning with Equation, which it only reborns in the grave, but everything is banished. It's empty, empty graveyard. What the heck? <laughs> okay, rip into a circular, why not? And then reborn the monster that we just circular sent to the grave. Sure, that's a thing. <laughs> that will trigger the circular, which will trigger the Fenrir to banish. Well, okay, we didn't do it. We didn't do it. We're waiting. We're waiting on the Fenrir banish. Allen Bird on summon. Activate to get negated by the Ash. Gotcha. Wait, Pot of E banish all the Arise? No, it did not. It did. This wasn't even an option. We randomly banished all of our Arise. We have only three cards in the extra deck. We only have Baron to Floor, Big Eye, and Dark Arms, and we do play three Arise, which, it, could someone run the math on this? Banishing three out of 15 from six? That's gotta be low. Damn. Okay, that's something. Normal summon Veiler to tribute the Veiler to special summon the circular from the graveyard, triggering Fenrir to banish that circular off the field, thus leaving the Super Factorial to be completely useless. Shifter won the game. <laughs> Shifter has defeated Mathmech. Our deck specifically built to beat Snake Eyes has defeated Mathmech, advancing us into the top four. Let's go. Back to back Shifter. So I do want to be clear that when Kashtira was popular, it got to the point where summoning a Rise Heart was no longer a good play because Triple Tactics talent deals with the one Rise Heart. And you know, I was thinking, hey, you know, it's, it could have been a choice to have the Fenrir, Unicorn, and another body on the field instead of going straight into the Arise Heart, which is much more easily dealt with with a single impermanence, single triple tactics talent. But uh, as we saw, that actually wasn't even a choice. And I do think it would have been better to go into the Arise Heart because it stops things like top decking a circular than sending from the decks to the grave. Now, with that out of the way, we have pure Snake Eyes versus Branded Despia. Are you ready? Two top, top tier decks begin. Starting off with our Poplar Normal Summon, which is not ideal. Are we gonna have to play under Max C, but when? Sending the Ash for the inherent special summon of the Diablo Star, so we couldn't chain Max C to its activation since it doesn't activate. We have the original Sinful Spoils to now drop the Max C in response to a special summon from the deck which would be Ash, Ash add Poplar, Poplar special summon onto the field, but how much do we want to do? We're actually going into Oak. Oak reborn the Ash, Poplar equip into the back row. Since we already have Ash in the grave, we don't have to directly summon Ash in the deck. And uh, we're adding back. We're not going to special summon. So uh, this was better. This was good. But we end on no disruption. Zero. Huh. Can we survive Brandon Despio with no disruption? We just had Max C. Maxi in response to the Branded Fusion. This is where you make the very difficult decision of just using Ash. Okay, that's not difficult at all. But had the Maxi resolved, we would have to think, can we one turn kill? Can we win? Negate. Now, we do have the Field Spell, which could special summon Poplar from the back row to further protect us a little bit. I think Branded Despia should win through this. We have Tragedy being triggered, Poplar being summoned right here, right now, so that they could go AFK for the rest of the turn. That's what I'm thinking. Come forth and summon, and let's speed this up, and let's see if Branded could win. We have our Mirror Jade for the non-target monster banish. We are searching for the original Sinful to be used next turn. Will there be another turn? We just drew into double max C with our triple tactics talent. To battle we go, we are not lethaling as we banish the Diablo Star off the field, triggering the Quem to reborn the Cartesia from the grave. Thus further wiping up the field, Poplar triggering its effect to equip into the back row again. And okay, that worked out quite nicely. Not game. Now with the brightest blazing branded king, 
we can negate everything currently on the field except the Mirror Jeep. We also have the Retribution, which can negate and affect a special summon, which is not the Diablo Star. Max C on the resolution here, disrespecting Gamma. We are going to use the Wanted Seeker to draw a card, returning back on the deck our original Sinful, drawing into our much needed Nibiru, which could have been used on the previous turn. Discard a special summon that Diablo Star, triggering the Poplar to equip into the back row in Oak. Cartesia is going to chain Fusion Summon into what here? Using the Mirror Jade to then reborn it with the Quem. Let's go. Gangrenal, trigger Quem, Quem reborn, Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade activated its effect to banish during the other turn, so it was turned off for this turn. Thus, come forth and reborn. Gangrenal is also going to be triggered on summon to send a monster from the deck or extra deck to the grave, which will be the Albion. Albion will send a branded spell or trap from the deck to the grave. And our Mirror Jade is now activatable for the non target monster banish. Oak will be triggered, reborning a banished or engraved monster. That will be our Poplar. All the level ones are boosted up by the fields by, by plus 1100. Have we used Ash yet? If we use Ash, we could search for Kurikara. So we have that Kurikara play in our pocket ready. We're going to Mirror Jade banish the dark so it cannot summon a dark monster to where it's pointing to. Kurikara? Yes, Kurikara! You activated. You activated. You activated. That means the Kurikara is going to be 3k. 45, 6,000, 71. 7,100 attack curry car tribute the whole field, and the retribution cannot stop its summon. Uh oh, we're gonna flip that up early. <laughs> oh, <laughs> off the field you go. Wait, you negated the field spell. Uh, she's still 6,000. So, <laughs> negate the field spell before we lose our mirror jade. Dude, we have 7,850. Not quite game. Using the Hida to get negated by the retribution. Returning two Albaz fusions in the grave back into the extra deck in order to negate, triggering the Hida to then search our deck for a fire monster, which will be our Poplar, which will trigger to special summon, which is not lethal because the field spell is negated. We're going to send the Poplar, summon from the deck, a Jet Synchron, link off the Jet Sync. You're under max C, just so you know, okay? This is getting a little bit crazy here. 11 cards in the hand now. Jet Synchron, discard. Now, the Flame Burst triggers if sent from the hand or field to the grave. Now, Gangrenal triggers because you used a monster effect to summon a monster. Summoning from the deck or extra deck, we have Proskenian. Proskenian's gonna be blocking this lethal damage here. We don't have the field spell boosting us. Ash send the Link Rebo to then summon from the deck a Flame Burst, which could push the Proskenian into the back row, opening up the field. But first, we're gonna steal your Link Rebo. But first, we're then going to actually respond with Link Rebo jumping from the graveyard onto the field by tributing our monster. Again, giving another special summon. 15 cards in the hand. Over 10,000 damage. Taking the maxi challenge. Serenir to block the lethal attack. It is not over. Holy moly, we forgot about the Bistial. Bistial sent a Lubellion from the deck to the grave. And now we are screwed. What the heck do we do? Further summon under Max C. They have 32 cards left in the deck. We're not even close to decking out, but Wystery could time out. This is too many cards in the hand to properly use every single one of them on turn four under a time limit. We're gonna Albaz summon through the effect of Titan Clad to fuse with the Amphibious Swarm Ship and Blow Whale, making our Mirror Jade, which is activatable for the non-target monster banish if we have time to. Now we have the Sinful Spoils of Betrayal, which can negate by sending Diablo Star from the hands of the grave, negate anything on the field. We do activate the Mirror Jade non-target monster banish. Now we're facing off an open field, and it's just going to be the negate plus Nibiru. So are we going to summon five times? Do we have time to properly calculate just four summons, then go for game and do so through a negate? So let's pay attention here. We are going to be using Branded in White. We cannot respond with the negate in response to the summon. That's summon number one. Four more summons and we are in trouble. Adding a kit from the deck to battle we go. This is enough for lethal damage. But the Diablo Star when sent to the graveyard will trigger to summon itself onto the field to block the lethal attack. But then we have the call by the Grave Finger to negate. Negate the Diablo Star, thus lethaling with our Borload Dragon for game. Damn. Very well done. We didn't even get close to getting Nibiru there. 
very interesting. And had the Perskinian been properly fusion summoned, a Flame Burge on the field could have taken it. We could have summoned it onto our field. Wanted Seeker in the draw phase to play around the Droll. And we got full Wombo combo with Diablo Star. Okay, uh, that's fine. Flame Burge, activate, equip, and uh, look at that. You could have elfed, reborn, your formula Synchron. You could have had Baron to Floor and a Mascarina. Instead, you got this stupid Ambla Whale Swarm Ship. All right, maybe you don't have room in the extra deck. That's fine. Draw phase. And also, this could have been Impermed, which it could have been untargetable with the elf. Man, jeez, oh, come on. Come on! Harpy Feather Duster, wipe up that back row as we already used up our Flame Burge and the Field Spell. If we had any other card in the back row, it could have summoned off of your normal or special. Kit adding a Branded Fusion to then return back our Branded Sword. We're going to now go right into our Apollo USA, triggering the Flame Burge to reborn two level one fires in the grave. We'd need one on the field in order to use the Promethean Princess in the grave to pop a special summon monster. So this is going to be quite interesting. The idea here is to chain link block your fusion to play around Apollo USA. How do we chain link block? Tragedy. How do we chain link block? Serenir. How do we not chain link block? Summoning an Albion, sending an Albaz and a Lubalion, which then gets negated, so don't do that. We're doing it correctly. Serenir will protect the fusion from the Apollo USA. Very well done. I mean, we could still screw this up, but we're not. I mean, we did it for this purpose. Chain one, chain two, can't Apollo. Very nice. I mean, you could, but not the Lubellion. You're negating the baits. Jabated. Now, finish off the fusion into our Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade, non-target monster banish. Promethean Princess is going to be wiping out the Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade is going to activate the non-target monster banish. Apollo USA is going to negate the non-target monster banish. And we don't have a branded opening to protect us from being destroyed. Thus, Mirror Jade gets wiped out. Mirror Jade activates in the grave to wipe out the field during the end phase, and Apollo USA has the choice to negate, which do we choose to negate? We do not negate, and then Apollo USA dies anyway, and now we lose our field in the end phase. We have the fusion deployment reveal from our extra deck to summon an Albas, and then fuse with that Promethean Princess into a brand new activatable Mirror Jade. Activating within the end phase, a non-target monster banished. Goodbye to the Ash Titan clad summon from the deck, a Quem. Quem sent from the deck to the grave, a Retribution. Retribution add in the graveyard back to our hand, our branded fusion to be used next turn. Cartesia add back to the hand to be discarded through the effect of Albaz. Albion setting up in the back row, the brightest blazing to negate the entire field. I'm really curious, why Stree, are you using this card because of Snake Eye? And uh, I mean, we did see it negate a full field. So if there's like an activatable ash and a field spell, you get to negate the ash and the field spell. Maybe that's why we're using this. Let's see. Uh, pop are getting popped in the end phase, equipping a flame burst into the back row. So what are we dealing with? The mirror jade already activated. So we can't use that. The Quem could reborn an Albaz and then the Albaz could fuse with the field. And uh, let's go. We also have negate everything on the fields currently with the brightest blazing. Diablo Star, I don't think we're going to be using a negate here. Triggering the flame burst when sent to the graveyard for the summon of the Diablo Star to summon two level one fires from the grave. That would maybe be an opportunity to do a full field negate here. So the Oak cannot summon from the deck and the Poplar does not search. And the Oak also does not summon from the grave or banish. That'd be negating one, two, three effects. Is that worth it? Potentially, nope, we're not negating. Okay. Poplar search, Oak resummon. This would be an even better negate, possibly. Using up the horror, nope, nope. Oh, damn, giving them the Kurikara. Okay, what are we saving it for? What are we saving? I guess now we have to use it. On summon, discard, trigger the Poplar. We can now respond with our trigger effect first, and then we could use the Brightest Blazing, which would negate our Quem. I, you know, I, that's the thing. It doesn't just negate your opponent's cards, it negates your own. So Quem would be negated, it would not summon Albaz, the Mirror Jade already can't activate, and just 
I don't know. I'm not sold on this card because it didn't even do anything. Albaz on summon, discard Diffuse, fusing with the Diablo Star into a Lubellion, discarding the branded fusion to then fuse into. Can't summon another Mirror Jade. You can't even use Mirror Jade to summon Mirror Jade. That'd be illegal. We are now going to be making an untargetable Albion, triggering the Promethean, which does not have to destroy the newly summoned monster, could destroy another monster in response to the special summon of that monster. Albion is going to be activating the special summon, a Droll and Formula Synchron onto the field. Now, the Amblo Whale is non-target destroying anything on the field here non-target because we destroyed our phoenix with the promethean so promethean and phoenix turned into a double disruptive double pop <laughs> we're not going to even see what we're popping here because we're scooping before the amblo whale resolves and not even choosing what side to put the droll and formula synchron onto damn draw phase to play around the droll summoning the aluber adding a branded fusion holding the ash do not let them eat your ash with opening nor aluber save your ash for the branded fusion setting up the branded lost here so that you cannot negate the activation of the fusion but you could still negate the effect so ash will come in here very well done negate and then you can't reuse it we now have Cartesia, which could trigger the branded lost which will then search for something like maybe a mercurier we have not even used up our normal summon, so we could even search a Quem the normal summon it. Gangrenal sending from the deck or extra deck to the graveyard, which will be resulting in a Serenir to send a branded spell or trap from the deck to the grave. Searching for that normal summonable Quem as we send a Lubellion from the deck to the grave. Quem on summon sending a Mercurier to then banish with the Druid Swarm to then activate to search our deck for an Albaz monster, which will be an Albion, which will allow us to draw a card by sending a branded card from the deck to the grave. First setting up a Lubellion. I don't know. We're getting Nibiru here, which will be triggering the Gangrenal to summon a monster from the deck or extra deck uh, before we were even able to set up a branded spell or trap into the back row. Perscanian. Now Albion's going with the play, sending a Retribution to recycle a branded spell or trap in the grave back to our hand, which will be our branded opening. Okay, branded opening will be used to summon a Quem from the deck, which we should have another copy of. And then the Quem could reborn an Albaz that we discard with the opening to then fuse with the opponent's field. So we still got some plays even though we got nibiru and Ashed. This is still pretty decent. All right, all right. And then we could search for another Mercurier. So we could have use with their fields, non-target monster banish, and monster negate. We have triple disruption after getting Ashed and nibiru -ed. I'm excited to see how this turns up. Discarding our Betrayal to summon our Diablo Star Black Witch, setting up a non-activatable Wanted as we already have the original Sinful Spoils to send Nibiru to special summon an Ash. Ash on summon, add a Poplar, Poplar on add, summon itself onto the fields. Add a Poplar search in our deck for the field spell here, which will boost up all our level ones by 1100 and set up an Oak into the back row. We're gonna send Oak to special summon from the deck, our Flame Burge. Flame Burge and the Diablo Star making a dark to trigger the Flame Burge to reborn the Oak and the Ash, triggering the Oak to reborn another level one fire from the graveyard if we have one, which we did not. As we now go into the Promethean Princess, which will reborn from the graveyard, our Flame Burge as the Poplar equips itself into the back row. Flame Burge still has the effect of pushing a monster on the field into the back row. We could deal with the Perskenian. Now we're popping off. Opening did not discard the Albaz. Was that correct? Okay, that will trigger the field spell to, well, Quem could send an Albaz, to be fair. Quem sent Albaz, no, we didn't. Okay, how are we reborning Albaz if it's in our hand? We aren't. And Quem has now been spun back into the back row as we now make an Amblo Whale. Amblo Whale going into the Zelantis. Now, was Perskenian properly special summoned? Let's investigate that real quick. If we read the Gangrenal, it says special summon from the extra deck improperly. It's right there, improperly, which means if we banish it, we can't re-special summon it because it was not properly summoned. And how are we gonna summon back a token because the token's gone when you banish it? So we're banishing the whole opponent's field and then re-summoning our field for game. Bunnish! And then, reborn. Zelantis, reborn our Flamberge, reborn our Snake Eyes Ash, reborn our Oak, and what happened to your field, mate? It's gone. 
We now have the Alibur because you made us lose our fusion monster. While the Alibur was in the grave, it will summon itself to then negate something on the field, negating the Oak, which will also trigger the Promethean Princess to pop the Alibur and the Oak. 2,700 in addition to our over 9,000, making this at over 10. Thousand damage on the field. Snake Eyes defeating Branded Despia. I love lethaling with Zelantis. It's beautiful. Marincess, what they do is they lock themselves into only being able to special summon water monsters only. Then they Zelantis the field. And then when Zelantis says, hey, we got to summon their monsters back. Oh, wait, we can only summon water this turn. So then you don't summon their monsters back because you are the one summoning them and you're locked in a water only. Starting off with our Diablo Star special summon, we have no disruption whatsoever and a single Diablo Star plus any card in the hand. It's full combo. We can summon the Mascarina, then link up into an Apollo USA, plus the Amblo Whale will be destroyable, or the Flame Burrs with the effect of the Promethean on our special summon to destroy. So we could pretty much go into an Apollo and pop a special summon. Those are our two main disruptions. And then we get a ton of follow-up plays afterward. We have Wanted in the draw phase to play around the Droll. Very well done. I am disappointed that it seems like not a lot of people are playing Elf. I, I swear that's good. It, we really just don't have room. Our summon triggering the field spell to special summon a back row monster from either side of the fields. So that's what's really cool about the mirror match here. Setting up an original sinful, using the flame burst to summon another flame burst in the back row and also activating our mascarina into just a nightmare unicorn. Okay, this is where the little knight would be summoned. Nightmare on Nightmare Unicorn on Summon will discard to then spin a card in the field back into the deck, which I believe we're going to not go for the original Sinful Spoils. We have Call by the Grave, which is going to be activated to negate the Flame Burst effect of reborning two level one fires from the grave, which also negates our own Flame Burst for two turns. Both Flame Burges are negated. So that's going to be messing us up ourselves. Oak on summon, reborn, and engraver banish level one fire. Poplar on summon, activate to search the deck. But then the Promethean Princess will be triggered off of the summon of the Poplar to then take out the Oak, stopping the effect of the Oak from summoning a Snake Eye Ash from the deck. That kind of sucks. We do have a Divine Temple here. Droll and Lockbird is going to lock us out of further adding cards from our deck to our hand, which means the Ash is not going to be as effective as the cross out designate being used in the mirror match to negate an original sinful spoils by banishing their own copy. I don't know how TCG players handle having three copies of this because I'm just thinking that's really toxic for mirror matches. We have Snake Eye Poplar being sent to the grave activating after making a Link Haribo and then we're ending our turn on pretty much nothing. What the heck was that? The applied the effect? What is this effect? Good. Uh, once per when any co-linked monster for your normal draw and your draw phase you draw one card for each different card name among those co-linked cards i knew it did that what the heck okay ash is going to negate the original sinful from searching for a level one fire no level one fire for you we're going to be discarding the one for one to reborn our Jet Synchron, triggering the field spell to summon an Oak, which will then trigger to summon an Ash, which will trigger to then add a Poplar, which will then trigger to summon itself onto the field, which will then trigger to search our deck for a Snake Eye Spell or Trap to be used next turn. We have the Promethean Princess reborning our Flame Burge. Is it? So it's still negated. So Flame Burge, no good. We have Hita, which can't reborn a monster from the opponent's graveyard. Amblo Whale into the Zelantis lethal play. Let's do it. Banish every single card that will trigger the Promethean Princess to pop a card in the field and resummon. We're going to have the co linked up Zelantis, co linked with the Nightmare Unicorn and the Promethean Princess, which will allow it to pop three cards in the field, and the Amble Whale in the Graveyard will pop another card in the field, plus the Promethean po Princess popping right now. So we have pop five. Pop one just happened. Pop two is happening. And then we have pop three. <laughs> Let's go. Get popping. So pop one down. Pop two. 
down. Pop three. One, two, three. We only have to pop two, though. We did have enough to pop three. And just like that, lethal damage. Z Lantis lethal is real, triggering the Promethean, giving us a co link to pop multiple cards. I love it. Sinful spoils wanted, grabbing a Diablo Star from the deck here, discarding our Poplar to activate our Diablo Star and Poplar. This also protects the Diablo Star from being gamma. So if you want to be safe around gamma, this is how you do it. The gamma protection chain link block. Setting up our original sinful spoils to then summon our Ash, Ash into a Poplar, Poplar activate to summon itself onto the fields. And now we're maxiing. Could maxi the Diablo Star because it doesn't activate to special. And we are, do we commit to the Mascarina here? That's the big question. Do, what do we do? Ooh, we ended. And you know, the Divine Temple will trigger off of their normal or special summon to Reborn from the Graveyard. And because we could swarm the field through the uh, field spell effect of summoning Flame Burst, then Flame Burst summoning another monster, we're very likely gonna survive lethal damage. Okay. Wanted in the draw phase, playing around Droll, grabbing a Diablo Star from the deck. Now we're not respecting the Gamma, we don't care. Nope. Hit him with the Max C. And we are going to be setting up our own Divine Temple. So what's gonna happen is your special summon will trigger my temple, then your temple will trigger my temple, then the Flame Burge could steal a monster you put it into your back row, or you could steal a monster from my back row. Both temples and both Flame Burges the entire field of the back row monsters, they could use whoever. Whoever they want can be used. So you have to be careful about that. Baylor is going to be negating the Ash. If we're activating a card like Baylor, that means we passed on the optional trigger of the field spell. We can't Veil, then activate the field spell. You'd have to field spell, then use Veiler. Okay, we're linking this off, which this triggers the field spell if we want it. Are we triggering? We are not. We're passing, equipping a Poplar in the back row, sending our own Poplar to summon our Diablo Star. <laughs> we are under Max C and we don't care. Setting up an original Sinful Spoils here, activating to send a card face up on our field to the grave, then summon an Oak. Oak on summon, target a monster to reborn. Ash on summon, activate to search our deck, but uh, we're not doing that. We're going to Ash send itself plus the relinquish anima to summon a snake eyes from the deck which is going to get negated ash negated by ash normal summon our jet synchron going into the boar load boar load will activate to equip the link karibo in the graveyard it does not have its negate yet so we are chaining the snake eye temple to special summon the opponent's flame burst onto our field and then we're chaining Nibiru to tribute the field, then take the Flame Burge afterward, and it's all before the Boar Load gets the negate. So wipe the field before the negate, and then yoink the Flame Burge onto your field, which will then trigger their field spell to also yoink our own Flame Burge onto their field, if they want to. <laughs> yep. You took mine, I take you. Oh my gosh, you got outplayed. Chain Link 2 versus chain link one is gonna send the flame burst to the graveyard and then you don't get to take it ain't no freaking way and oh well, well, well we also could use flame burst to take the flame burst anyway so <laughs> so it, we had two different ways to ensure that you you do not take my flame burst the diablo star could have sent it or as you saw right here we could have uh, summoned it from our back row very nicely done and uh, Kurikara could uh, now take the Diablo Star and the Flame Burge and send it to the graveyard. And the Diablo Star is going to be what? It's going to be 3,045, 5,600 attack. Wait, this one already? No, no, th this one didn't activate, but this one, this is getting confusing. You got to write some notes on it. Did this one activate? No, this one activated. Okay, it's Tribute 2, though. It's Tribute 2. Uh, 5,600 attack, Kurikara. First, we're going to triple tactics talent. Take control. You got to take control of the right one. That was the correct one. That was correct. Pushing Nibiru, summoning the Kurikara at 5,600 attack. We have lethal damage just like that. Flame Burst reborn from the graveyard. Even more. <laughs> Two level one fires. How did this happen? Over 12,000 damage. Damn. That's unbelievable. That was unbelievable. Okay, so we made a mistake. 
and that was activating the flame burge. We should not have activated it. We should have let the Diablo star send the flame burge they were trying to take control of, and then it would have summoned. And then we wait with our flame burge if they had a way to summon a flame burge, and then it wouldn't have been sent to the graveyard through the Curry Kara, right? I don't know what else would have happened in that duel, but we should not have activated our flame burge because the Diablo star had it covered. Oh, what the heck? We have two wild decks in the top four. The two rogue choices here, pure Kashtira versus Makanko. Begin. Huh? What happened? Well, uh, Brick Terra has happened. We do have Gamma though, and Ash. So do we Ash negate the Durendal search? Is that correct? I, you know, well, it was correct enough for us to want to finger her. Negate! So then we have Gamma for Isolt. If we negate the effect of Isolt adding, they could then make another Isolt if they have enough cards to do so. I, you know, would think that it probably is correct to negate the initial Isolt activation if this is Gamma, which it is. If it's impermanence, I would say no, because if you imperm negate this, they could summon another warrior from the hand if they have one, potentially. And most Isolde players are playing too, besides Morisaki, which no longer has room for it because they're playing Promethean Princess. So this is just a great negate now that we looked at the extra deck. But a lot of people are playing too. This is going to be Maxi in response to the Cypher and Gear Gamma. We're just gonna draw one off of this Maxi. It's kind of desperate. Instead of holding Maxi for the next turn, not that we, you know, we don't know that there's an Ash in the hand, it worked out. Oh boy, did it work out. We drew into a preparation of rights. We are still cooking because of that draw one Max C. Discarding our thrust, grabbing the ceremony. Ceremony special summoning our Hime. Ceremony will then send him a Conco card from the deck to the graveyard, which we could interact with with the Ohime. Yup, we got the water. Equip the water onto a monster on the field. We're gonna then return that monster on the field, returning Gamma back, but the side frame driver will be banished during the end phase so the Gamma will not be activatable to now have a Ha Ray, Ha Ray searching for the Fire Dance, Fire Dance reborning the Hugh Lee. And now we have, oh my gosh, do we have game? 25, 25, 25, <laughs> not quite game. Why is Gamma in attack? Why is the driver in attack against Makanko? That's not a good idea. All right, so we took a free 7,500 into scooping it up. All right, well, let's hop into game number two. They reflect the battle damage. The battle damage reflect to keep your monsters in defense so double edge does not work on it. If you got a fat D, then maybe put yourself into attack, but then again, the double edge can then be used on you if you're in attack. Pathfinder, Ash, negate the field spell or the Pathfinder. We are negating the path. And because the field spell is limited to one, where in the TCG it's not, you know that they can't have another one in their hand unless they're playing more than one field spell beyond the cash tier limited to one one. He's small worlding into our unicorn, which is all combo, but we're gonna have to deal with that Max C. Max C in response to the Theosis, summoning a monster from the deck here. We're gonna chain special summon our Scareclaw cash tier. And the big question is, do we commit to an Arise Heart under Max C? Or do we just end with a Fenrir and be happy? Are we happy? Are we fine? Unicorn looking at the extra deck, taking out a power tool, Braver Dragon, searching for a Rise Heart. Are we some, oh gosh, we're committing. We are committing. We are so far committing. Banishing a Theosis plus three cards off the top of their deck, grabbing back of preparations from the Theosis being banished. And we're going straight into that a Rise Heart, forcing every card that is sent to the grave to be banished instead. And we already have an out to the Arise Heart with the Axe of Fools. Axe of Fools activated on the Arise Heart. Well, actually the Rise Heart could chain, banish it, but then the TTT could take control. This will be interesting. We have to activate, otherwise we would be negated. We've got to banish three to then banish the, chain the preparation to special summon a banished monster onto the field if we want. Looks like we're not activating that effect. We're just getting this up early. Okay. Activate, re-equip the Theosis mate. Water onto the Fenrir, spin back the Fenrir, summoning a Hugh Lee. Now our whole field of Makankos are untargetable. Preparations could resummon the Fenrir back in the field. We're going for the draw to not take control. We don't care that our cards are getting banished. The Arise Heart's not gonna be able to banish a card in the field again, so we don't have to worry about that. Yohime adding a card is gonna then have to discard a card while that will get banished. 
the ceremony's not going to work well because it would get banished. So how do we deal with this Arise Heart? Continually sucking up banished cards left and right. We've got the Sublimination Knight summoning a Squeak Knight onto the field. Special summoning the Fire Flint Lady to summon a Nightmare Unicorn on summon. Discard a card to get rid of the Arise Heart once and for all. No, we're going for preparations. Forcing out the activation of preparations, leaving up the Arise Heart, special summoning a Scareclaw Kashtira instead, which negates a Makonko if it were to battle into it. Very interesting. Can we just leave this up to get swinging, right? Oh, well, now we can't. So well, this is really interesting. Whatever, we have to get rid of the Scareclaw Kashtira. That's a problem, a big problem. Grabbing the ceremony, banishing the original sinful from the hand. We can't swing into a rise heart anymore. The ceremony is getting banished now. We were supposed to have 6,000 reflected battle damage. Our whole field is untargetable. Ending our turn. Wow, we couldn't even attack. So what did we accomplish? In the graveyard, we have nothing that can equip with the Ohime. We have the rivalry, which could... Uh, oh boy, this is something we can't negate because Axe of Fools is gone. We could take control of the Arise Heart, which the Arise Heart can't stop itself from being taken control of unless it banishes itself. So what do we do? Birth, activate Birth, normal summon our Fenrir. Fenrir activate to search for the Arise Heart, the regular Rise Heart. Rise Heart, special summon itself onto the field. You are negated right away. Boom, negated. You would think start of the battle phase, we would maybe have to use this. Uh, okay, I mean, are we in big trouble or what? Rivalry being activated onto the Scareclaw Kashtira. A Rise Heart's going to be banishing the Ohime because you're now not untargetable since as soon as we declared an attack, immediately you're negated. Immediately you're no longer having the targeting protection. Thus, we are able to banish the Ohime off the field. I really think we had to make this play at the start of the battle phase, which means you have to be toggled on. It won't ask you at the end of the main phase. It won't ask you at the start of the battle phase. Toggle on is the only way. Yeah, the Scareclaw Kashtira. Yeah, you really got to get toggling for the Kashtira Scareclaw. Let's go to game three. Sublimination Knight Imperm negate the ability to make an eye sold. And we thought we were safe with the Call of the Grave, but we were not. Now, we're still going to cook. We're going to use the Ceremony Special Summon the Ha Ray going into the Ice Sold. Should you Ash here? No. Do not. Don't do it. Did not, of course, didn't do it. Now, Ash. Yes, very good. But then your Ash gets fingered, so it didn't matter anyway. But we still made a good effort. That's fine. So the question is, was the Imperm bad? In hindsight, of course it was, but in general, you know that their main goal is to summon an Ice Sold. So I would argue that we should have just held the Imperm, like pretending Ice Sold's like a branded fusion. Just save your negates for the Ice Sold. We simply have triple monster negate, and we could take control of an opponent's monster. So negate, 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 take control. Those are our only disruptions. Four, can we play through four? Inherent special summon does not activate. Ogre, big enough to take out the Apollo, so we take control of it. Still have the triple monster negate. Small world banish, rise heart, and pathfinder to grab our Fenrir. Fenrir will be negated by Apollo in main phase two. And then Fenrir will activate again, which will then be negated again by the Apollo. So eat up 1600 attack off the Apollo. Yep, negate again. And then we're left with a single negate. Just one left on the Apollo. Preparations cannot summon a monster from the grave. Only from the hand or banishment can preparations be used on. Water is going to be returning back the Apollo to summon a Hugh Lee, then adding a rivalry. Our entire field is now untargetable. The Fenrir could have activated, but to just banish the Ogre. We now have Ohime being added to the hand, plus a ritual spell on the graveyard to the hand. The ritual spell per 
a quick card in the grave is going to pop that many cards in the field, non-targeting. Taking out just the preparations, burning for 1,000, leaving up the Fend rear so we can reflect not once, not twice, not three times, but four times, reflecting the battle damage for game. McConko advancing to the grand finale. Huh? Set called by pass. We have Max, I, Max C called by and DD Crow. Ash is here on summon, grab the Poplar. Poplar activates special summon itself onto the field. We're gonna be chaining the Max C, which will now allow the use of our triple tactics talent to either draw to or look at the hand and return a card back on the deck. Do we go for lethal damage here? The field spell is gonna boost us up by plus 1100 each. That's gonna be 3700 onto the field. We did not want to go for lethal. Okay, that, that is our decision here. We're still gonna be making a Mascarina in main phase two. Hopefully we do not regret this, as after allowing them to draw again, we're then going to look at the hand, returning a called by while there's a called by in the, on the field. Uh-oh. Max C in the draw phase. Are we going to chain called by? There's still a choice, an opportunity to do so. Called by the grave, just like that. Goodbye. I mean, uh, what happened to our field here? We are solely reliant on the opponent summoning to trigger our field spell to summon the flame version. If they don't summon, we don't have a play. There's no play if they don't summon. So if you have a way to just deal with the field spell, then uh, you could be good. Do we summon? Do we summon? Do we trigger the fields? Yup, we're triggering the fields. Field trigger, we go. Snake Eye Field Spell, summon the Flame Burge. We can now link it off with the Mascarina, then trigger the Flame Burge to reborn up to two level one fires from our graveyard back onto the fields. We got the original Sinful, which could send a face-up card to control to the grave to summon a level one fire, summoning our Ash, activate the Ash, search our deck for the Poplar, activate the Poplar, summon the Poplar. We have to be careful. If we equip anything into our back row, that Flame Burge will steal it. Like that, uh, we can steal that whenever we want now. That's ours. That flame burge is ours. Come forth and equip a poplar. Poplar and ash into the grave to summon an oak. Oak reborn from the grave. We're going to then use oak to send the flame burge and itself. Did we wait too long on this activation? Maybe we should have stolen that flame burge while we could have. We now have triggering our own flame burge to reborn up to two level one fires in the grave. We're now going and we're activating the flame burst to push the opposing flame burst into the back row. We're going to chain link off with it with our mascarina to stop it from going into the back row, making our nightmare Phoenix. Nightmare Phoenix on summon will discard to pop the opposing field spell. Very nicely done. Also triggering our poplar. Wait, we did not trigger our flame burst to reborn two level one flowers in the grave. We did not. We did not. What is going on? Am I missing something? I, I mean, we're under Max C, I think. We just didn't want to do it. Okay, uh, Promethean Princess reborning the heat up from the graveyard, then further going into the Amblo Whale. Amblo Whale into the Zelantis lethal combo. Banish the entire field, then resummon the field, then trigger the Promethean Princess to pop that card on the field, and then co link with the Zelantis with the Promethean to pop up to two cards on the field, non targeting, plus popping our Hida with the Promethean. No, we didn't do that part, but if you did, it would trigger the effect of the Amble Whale to then further pop another card in the field. He, uh,. You wanted to play around Curry Kara, I guess, but why not trigger the Flame Burge on the Grave to reborn two level one fires? Yeah, I, I guess we're just like, we're gonna lose anyway. Why even bother? Sure, sure. Let's go into game number two. T you know, we did see the hand, to be fair. Ash is going to get ashed, but Cross Out Designate will not negate. Okay, <laughs> sure. Just, that's fine. We have the original Sinful sending the Ash to summon our Poplar. Poplar activates searching for our Divine Temple. We are not going to use Droll. We're going to save Droll, but you could use Droll against an opposing Max C on your own turn if you want. You could pretty much use it like an Ash, making a Link Crevo with the Poplar. Then we are going to be sending the Flame Burst for our Diablo Star to trigger the Flame Burst to reborn our only two level one fires in the grave which if we activated Poplar to equip itself in the back row, we could have not made this play. 
So it was correct to pass on the activation of Poplar to make this play, as we then summon an Oak from the deck by sending the Poplar and itself at the effect of the Ash, then use the effect of the Poplar to equip into the back row as the Oak reborns another monster onto the field. Now that we have Flame Burge on the field, we want to equip the Diablo Star. Why this? Why not do some Mascarina play? Well, the Sinful Spoils of Betrayal sends a Diablo Star from the hand or field. Even if it's in the back row, that's going to work. Then it will trigger her effect to Reborn from the Grave. Further searching for a follow-up play. Let's go. We popping? Popping the Promethean with the Bear in the floor. Okay, so we're no longer locked in a fire only. And it's going to have the effect to Reborn from the Grave. Special summoning the Diablo Star, which would have not been possible with the Promethean on the field, to then activate to search for a follow-up Wanted Seeker. Ash on summon is going to get negated by the Sinful Spoils of Betrayal. If we play the card ourselves, we could negate it with Cross Out Designate, which I don't think we do. Negate! And we can't call by the Grave Stop it either. We could call by this if we want, but what are we called by? We don't call by the Diablo Star. I think we use called by on the Flame Burge, but then that stops our own Flame Burge. Thus, we don't use called by, reborning both of our Snake Eyes to then trigger the Ash to grab a Curry Kara for next turn. What do you do knowing that there's a Curry Kara next turn? You just uh, kill yourself like that, I guess. Okay. And uh, just like that, <laughs> Snake Eyes for game. Didn't use called by, didn't use cross out. Cross out's a good way to temporarily negate something like Flame Burge without turning off your Flame Burge for the next turn, but it then also does negate Flame Burge, even your own, for that turn. Ash on summon, adding the Poplar, triggering the Poplar to then activate our Ash in, I should say, our Maxi in response to the Poplar summoning. And the big question here is. Do we commit with the Mascarina? Poplar is going to attempt to search for the field spell, which the Imperm will be negating. Now, is it correct to Imperm a Poplar here? I think because they're under max C and they're planning on probably just setting up the field spell and ending, it would make more sense to use the Imperm because the max C has forced this into a simplified game state. Outside of the simplified game state where max C has not been resolved, I probably would hold on to the Imperm. All right, very well done. And wow, we're just ending. We're just gonna sit on Nibiru and DD Crow. So that's good. Normal summon our Jet Synchron into the Link Reba. We could discard a card from the hand to reborn that Jet Synchron. I think we're going into a Phoenix play. We're going Hita. Hita, steal nothing from the opponent's graveyard. <laughs> Simply just get battling. And what's cool about Hita is when Hita is destroyed, it could, oh my gosh, jeez. Kill the Ash, then steal the Ash. That's the line. That's the line. I, there you go. Let's go. Thank you for the ash. Ash at Poplar. <laughs> Poplar onto the field. Should we have like uh, exceeded into like a Leer Lust to keep it in, as a material so it would not be sent to the grave? Cross out, designate. While we already have a Nibiru in the hand, we have another one in the deck to negate your Nibiru. I do not think so. Negate. We got the Divine Temple equipping the Flame Burge, which could summon a monster from either player's back row. We're then going to send to the grave to special summon a Flame Burge from our deck, triggering Poplar to equip into the back row, linking off the Hida and the Flame Burge to make our own Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess reborn a Fire from the grave. Now it's non-targeting, so we could change our mind. You know we wanted to summon Flame Burge, but we'll still summon something else instead. That's going to be our Oak. Oak has not activated yet, so it's going to reborn the Banished Jet Synchron after it had discarded to summon itself from the grave to make the original Hita play, as we now make our Amblo Whale. Oak will then send the other Flame Burge, even though you banished our other one, to then summon up to two level one fires from the graveyard back on the field, linking off, I should say, synchroing into Formula Synchron to draw a card on summon. As the original Sinful Spoils sends the Poplar to summon a Poplar to then make a Mascarina. Mascarina is here, and it's ready to link off during the opponent's turn. The Poplar being sent to the grave through the Mascarina will equip a back row card like Flame Burge, which the Snake Eye Temple could reborn from the back row if we don't reborn it ourselves. So do remember the Flame Burge and the Field Spell could summon from either player's back row, making this mirror match crazy. 
We have Wanted Searching for another Diablo Star, which can pop off full combo. We also have the Sinful Spoils in the back row, which could summon an Ash. Making our Diablo Star here. By discarding Diablo Star, we could use Called By to banish it if we want to, but we're not going to even bother. By using the Promethean Princess to target our own monster to destroy, plus the opposing monster, we could then use the monster we're targeting to link it off with Mascarina. And since it says destroy them, we're just going to destroy the opposing Diablo Star, not destroy our own. Paul USA with our triple monster negate plus Poplar equipping a monster into the back row. Also, we have our Promethean Princess being summoned here. So do be ready. Now you gotta be careful. If we summon special or normal, which we're doing right now, you are triggering the field spell to summon a flame burge onto the field. You are committing to it. You're doing it. Oops, we put the Promethean into the Anima column. Was that a mistake? How big of a mistake is that? We have Apollo USA negating, which by the way, if you trigger your field spell in response to the Anima, which would actually be in response to the Poplar activating, you then can't negate. So we have the choice of, do we negate or do we summon a Flame Burge? We chose to not summon Flame Burge. Anima is gonna suck up. Apollo USA is going to negate. So we're instead going to respond to the original Sinful Spoils, summoning a body from the deck to then summon our Flame Burst from the back row, right? No. What are we waiting for? We're just, we're chilling. Sure. Right, maybe we want to steal the opponent's back row instead. Is that better to do? Now we're finally doing it. We're just like, okay, sure. Now's the time. Now we have our own Flame Burst, which does have the quick effect to steal a back row monster from either side of the field. Apollo using its final negate. All three monster negates plus the Promethean pop have been used. And we still have the follow-up Ash, but unfortunately we have an Ash in the graveyard, which will have the Ash on the field be negated by the called by the grave. Negate. Damn. Damn. Still in main phase one. Linking this off in a Hita. Hita steal an oak, right? Is there an oak in there? Uh-huh. Give me your Oak. Oak reborn a monster from our grave. They keep on going. I'm like, what is going on? Triple monster negate plus Promethean princess, and they're still cooking. Summon from the deck a flame burge of our own. So this is the situation. The flame burge can only activate its effect during the opponent's turn of summoning a monster from the back row, but we can then just instead use our flame burge to push, push the opposing flame burge into the back row. Yup, into the back row you go. So now you can't steal our back row flame burge. 3,000 damage over the Apollo USA. And as we now further link this up into a Promethean Princess, reborn our flame burst. But first we're triggering flame burst to reborn two level one fires in the grave. I, I can't overstate this. Apollo negate, Apollo negate, Apollo negate, Promethean Princess pop, four disruptions, and we are still making a great field. This is unfreaking believable. And we're still summoning. World Zelantis is here, banishing the entire field and resummoning it back onto the field. Come forth and summon, summon, summon. Will this trigger our own field spell? If your opponent summons a monster, so we're the ones summoning their monster, so it does not trigger our field spell, but it does trigger our Promethean Princess to pop the opposing Promethean Princess to summon itself onto the field because we popped a link that triggers the Ambler Whale to then pop a card in the field, which also triggers our own Ambler Whale to pop another card in the field. We non-target pop, then you non-target pop, take out the field spell, and take out the field spell. <laughs> Nefiru on top of all of this! Tribute the entire field, giving them a fat token at 8,200 attack, but only 2,500 defense. Let's go. What do we have here? We have the Snake Eye original Sinful Sins to return back in the deck our Poplar to search our deck for an Oak. Oak on summon will reborn a monster that is banished and or in the grave. Poplar on summon will activate to search our deck for another original Sinful Spoils, but only one of the effects can be activated once that turn. Summon an Ash from the deck, active to search for a Poplar. Poplar active to summon onto the fields. And we also have the Flame, wait, the Ash was negated by Called By. So the Oak is being summoned also alongside the Jet Synchron because the Flame Burst was sent to the Graveyard as we then send it to the Graveyard to summon our Link Karibo as we then make a Dark, Dark Charmer. Dark, Dark Charmer stealing the opposing player's Diablo Star Black Witch, which will trigger her effect on summon to set into the back row a Sinful Spoils Wanted, which will be usable next turn. 
We further link up our negated Ash and Dark to go into a Link 3 Selene Navidad. This is an Axis Code Talker play. With at least three spells from either player's graveyard, we could have reborn a Diablo Star from the graveyard or from the hand if we had one, into now making our Axis Code Talker banish any number of different attribute links in the graveyard to wipe up the entire field, but be careful to not take out the Flame Burge as it would trigger to summon up to two level one fires from the grave. Get poppin'. Banish number one. Goodbye to the token as we just simply go for lethal damage right here, right now. Game. Ooh. That's a that's a duel. That was a duel. That is a duel. That was great. I liked that. Uh, snake Eye versus Snake Eye is a fun time. I, I don't think the mirror match is solved. I don't think so. I think people are going to be learning, especially in the grind game beyond the first two turns, having to figure out the field spells and flame burst just stealing each other's back row. That's something. Grand finale. Makanko versus the new best deck, Snake Eyes. Are you ready? Begin. Conco opening up with no disruption whatsoever, but we have opened up with our original Sinful to send an Ash to summon an Ash and then add a Poplar. We're gonna use the effect of the Flame Burst putting a Poplar into our back row here, and let's see what the opponent could do. Wanted within the draw phase, we're not going to Ash that as they add a Diablo Star Black Witch. We're gonna be discarding a Called By to summon our Black Witch to then search for a Sinful Spoil card from the deck, which will be our original Sinful Spoils. Sending our Diablo Star to summon from the deck, nothing as we Ash, but then the finger's coming. It's not. We did not finger the ash with our called by. We're saving it for something better. What are we saving it for? Preparation of rights, grabbing an Ohime from the deck as the Wanted now returns the original back in the deck to draw one. Okay, Ohime searching for the Makanko Dance, then discard the Makanko Dance, which could reborn a Makanko from the grave, which could be sent from the deck to the grave with the ceremony after the Ohime is summoned with the ceremony. Triggering the Promethean to pop the Ohime, and also the field spell has been triggered from the Ohime summon as we choose to save our finger for the Promethean Princess instead. Negate! So our Hime is safe, not getting popped by the Promethean, and the Poplar is being summoned from our back row onto the field, activating to grab an original Sinful to be used next turn, normal summoning our Ash, using the Flame Burst to summon an Oak from our back row to then summon an Ash from the grave to then activate the Ash to search our deck for a Kurikara to be used next turn. Will there be a next turn? As we then Synchro with Ash and Ohime into a Power Tool Braver Dragon. This is going to be fully negated, unfortunately, by the impermanence. Otherwise, we would equip up to three equip cards from the deck and then have the ability to negate a monster on the field. We're going to use the ceremony to send a Makanko from the deck to the grave to then reborn with the Makanko dance, which will then trigger the Ha Ray to search our deck for an equip card, which will be a water. Water could spin any monster on the field back into the hand to summon a Hugh Lee, now making all our Makanko cards completely untargetable as we add a rivalry from the deck to the hand. We're going to then send the Ha Ray and Power Tool to make a Hida. Hida will steal a Fire Monster from the opponent's graveyard, which will be a Sunlight Wolf. Are we making an Axis Code Talker? Selene Navidad, gain up to three counters or more to then remove three to then summon a Spellcaster from our hand or graveyard, which will be our Diablo Star Black Witch to then go into an Axis Code Talker. Okay, Access Code Talker is here at 5,300 attack with Light, Fire, and Light and Fire. We could pop two cards. We now have Link Rebo on the field here, wiping out the Oak, wiping out just one more card here. Goodbye to the Link Rebo. We're then using Gear Free to banish an equip card to summon itself from the hand to battle. We go reflecting 3,000 battle damage using the Gear Free to equip the Snake Eyes Flame Burge on the attack. Poplar activating to equip an Ash into the back row. And then we have lethal damage with the Axis Code Talker for game. Ain't no way we thought we had another turn by adding the Curry Car from the deck to our hand. Damn. We're going to have to play through Droll, which really isn't that big of a deal. We may even want to cross out, designate, negate it. Do we negate? No. Maybe we don't play Droll. 
Now Poplar will not be able to add a Snake Eye card, so we're going to just be sending the Poplar for the Oak. Oak Reborn Poplar also equip itself into the back row. And on top of that, we are making our Amblo Whale. Whale, 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 plus we have Imperm. So we have on Special Summon, Pop, and we also have probably a triple Monster Negate with the Mascarina. And those are the four public disruptions. On top of that, the Secret Impermanence. Let me play through the initial four. In the draw phase, summoning Mascarina, playing around the Triple Tactics talent here. Water equipped onto the Amblo, which we may be using Mascarina in response to the activation to return the Amblo and summon a Makonko from the deck. That's a hard once for turn effect that's now gone. Apollo USA is here with our triple Monster Negate, triggering the Flame Burst to Reborn up to two level one fires. Both of them will be triggering using the Oak to chain link block the Ash so it does not get Ashed. But we're now gonna get triple tactics talented unless we have cross out designate to negate. We should be playing this card. You all should be playing it. Yes, negate. Very well done. Attempting to take control of the Apollo USA, being met with a no. Negate. Now what? I think Curry Car is going to be used next turn, but we saw what happened last time that tried to be used. We had the Sublimination Knight attempting to summon an Eye Soul from the extra deck. Apollo USA is going to negate. And then what? We have the Makonko Dance onto the Sublimination Knight, battling into the Oak, wiping it out, follow up Angelica's Ring, which will negate the first spell we activate. Okay. Linking off a Link 4 Apollo USA for a Link 4 Zelantis. Not just the Amblo, but the Apollo USA could summon the Zelantis, banishing the entire field, resummoning the entire field, Probably one of the coolest cards ever, and a card that I'm so happy to be in the meta. Triggering the Ash, triggering the Poplar, triggering the Promethean to pop your monster that I summon onto your field. You're going to be equipping a Squeak Knight while it's getting popped. That's fine. Or a Hare, sure. And then Promethean is now here, co-linked up with the Zelantis, ready to pop two more cards in the field if there were any left to pop. And just this alone is 6,000 damage. We could very easily put up some more for lethal. Poplar equip, Poplar trigger, Poplar, Poplar, get Poplar in. Come forth. Field spells game. Field spell will just boost these up, 1,100 each. And just like that, over 8,000 damage, taking this into an epic game three match. Very nice. Looking cool, so, uh, Snake Eyes is a cool deck. I, I think if we're looking at something like Super Heavy versus Snake Eyes, it is cooler to play Snake Eyes. I don't know if it's just the new factor or, or what, maybe the Promethean, the Zelantis, the Flame Burge being a big part of the deck. I, I, it's just a cool deck. We have Makonko choosing to go first, normal summoning a Fire Warrior to then special summon one alongside it to then make our Ice Sold search for the Gear Free that cannot be summoned this turn. Arc Light, if sent to the Graveyard, will search for the deck, our main ritual monster. As I said, Fire Dancing, the Huey from the hand, searching our deck for the rivalry, and we are not linking this off to then search for an Ohime. We're ending with just this, which is actually great. The Huey states that the Makonko cards cannot be targeted, and the Huey cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect, and if we special summon a monster, the Promethean will pop it, and any card sent from the hand or deck that's a monster is banished instead. And also the Herald of Arc Light could just negate anything. And the rivalry could take control of a monster or negate a spell. We already have the fools that is in the graveyard, so we can't use that. So our disruptions are one, two, three. Three public disruptions. Let's go. We played through three public ones, the secret ash. Poplar on summon going to be negated by the secret ash in our hand. Even though it gets banished, it's still activatable because it does not have to go to the grave. We're then going to link up Poplar into Linkeribo, triggering the Poplar to equip itself into the back row. 
using the original Sinful Spoils to send the Poplar from the field to the grave, as we're now activating the rivalry to negate the original Sinful Spoils with the brand new, newly released Angelica's Angelic Ring. With two more disruptions left, we have just ended our turn. Ain't no way can Makanko inflict lethal damage on an open field. Returning the Hue Lee with the water to summon a Ha Ray, triggering the Ha Ray to search her deck for an equip card, triggering the rivalry to grab the Fire Dance on the grave back to our hand, to then summon the Hue Lee from the hand back onto the field. We have the Gear Freed that can now be summoned from the hand by banishing an equip card. That will be an additional 3,000 damage on the field. We can link up with the Zero Attack Makanko, special summoning a Poplar onto the opposing side of the field, triggering the effect of the Promethean Princess to take out our monster and then come forth and summon a Renaud from the graveyard as we equip, grab the equip card Durendal back to our hand. We are now further making a Hida. Hida is on the field here at 755 damage on the field. Ash is going to negate the effect of the Herald of Arclight, attempting to search our deck for an Ohime. No Ohime search for you. We're going to Gear Freed Banish an Equip card to come forth and summon itself onto the field with the ability to negate a monster effect, activating the Rondo onto the Poplar to take control, but there's no room to take control, so it gets destroyed with an open field at over 10,000 damage. The new Diablo Star, new Angelic Ring cards being used in the brand new way to play Makanko, defeating pure Snake Eyes. Damn. I need that D. We need the D. Where's the D? Where's Morsaki's D? Top 16. Anderson, who won the last Meta Weekly, getting top 16 with a much more condensed version of their Rescue Ace deck. I believe it, it was at 45 or even 48 cards they got first place with, and now dropping six cards to looking something more tight like this. That's nicely done. This is the extra deck here using double Promethean Princess. Okay. And then we have... Addy Maestro with Mathmech. The usage of this deals are down, so the usage of Mathmech should go up. That is good, there's the extra deck. And then we have, not Mathmech, but Ignister, using some Mathmech in it, playing Book of Eclipse. Is Book of Eclipse now a good card to use against Snake Eye? Is this for Snake Eye or what? We've got Red Rebu also in the main deck. Here is the extra deck. We then have Archer with pure Snake Eyes, 40 cards clean, no elf. So you get minus one point for that, thank you. And then we have another Miluk with pure Snake Eye. Also not playing elf, uh, minus one to you. And we have Branded Despia, DayZ Breaker, 60 card, crazy large deck. Uh, what are they gonna have to do to further nerf this deck? Do they even need to with us getting the new cards that are now contending with it and even doing better as Snake Eyes is? There's the extra, very nice. Then we have Nick GT, Super Heavy Samurai is still here. It's still top tier. It is being outshined by Snake Eye though. Snake Eye is not heavily affected by Droll. It's also not as heavily affected by Max C and it still puts up a ton of great plays also uninterrupted. It is also a one card combo deck that could one card OTK or one card set up a bunch of disruptions. So uh, yeah, you know, is Snake Eye just a better Super Heavy Samurai deck or what? Moving on to Seba. Seba using the Where Arf Thou and is in fact using Sprite Elf like an absolute Giga Chad. Very well done. No Zeus, uh, cause we got- Elf is better than Zeus, you saw it here first. Very nice, and uh, Snake Eye Chase with the Silvera. Yes, this is a Chad deck. And then we have Mattapin, 13, 40 card clean, also like a Chad, but uh, this time we remembered to put Zeus in our deck or we are at least using it. I'm not sure what uh, card we're missing compared to this one, I'd have to double check. So we got the Leerlust Zeus plus the Sprite Elf and the Synchro Package. That's a, a lot of cards to squeeze into this deck, so much so we didn't have room for Heat Soul. No Heat Soul in this extra deck. Very nice, good job. Not playing the Negate Trap or the Chase, that's fine. And then we have 60 card WYS. Yep, looking good, looking good. There is the extra deck. We got the Anaconda. This card ain't getting banned anytime soon, right? And then moving on, a no wow, how much Branded Despia in the top cut? Branded is forever, 60 card branded, looking good. Should they ban grass? You know, they are adding it with thrust sometimes. 
So there, and we have the really good usage of the Draco Draco quest to use with the Super Poly, getting rid of a Baron to Floor and a Borderlord Savage Dragon, which Snake Eyes is sometimes summoning both also. So they're gonna have Borderlord and the Baron, and then you could just Super Poly it away. And then we have another Math Mech. Yeah, Math Mech is going up with the usage of Bistial going down. And you know, Serenir also did just recently get limited to one. Very nice. Good job, Lauren Dick. And then we have Emma. Enma. Enma 40 card clean. We got the Fucho Downward Magician into the Zeus combo. Not enough room for Heat Soul, nor having room for Elf. Uh, quite interesting to see how tight the extra deck really is. Got some Nibiru action here. Okay. And then Noxumbra with pure Kash Tira. Granted, Despia wants their cards in the graveyard generally. Math Mech wants their cards in the graveyard. Snake Eye wants their cards definitely to be in the graveyard. Well, deny them the graveyard with a Rise Heart and Shifter. And that's exactly why no Noxumbra made this really good choice to play this deck, denying all the graveyard effects. Very well done. And then second place, Bene. Bene in the top two. No Boar Load, no Elf. We do have Heat Soul here. We do have the Zelantis and no chase we do have the negate trap though so against an early max c we could use wanted or and black witch to just go right into the betrayal then end our turn probably with a ton of other hand traps that we have here seeing a lot of nibiru in the deck list but then first place with holy moly how big is this deck 60 card makanko morisaki so this is going to be the main deck here let's look for new cards We'll just look for the new. New Ricardetto, new Diablo Star, new Original Sin, and new Wanted, and new Angelica's Angelic Ring, which is searchable through the rivalry trap to negate spells, which we've been seeing it negate a lot of spells. So uh, very nicely used, very well done. This is the extra deck, very good. And then the total breakdown here, holy moly, Snake Eye. Domination from Snake Eye. That is a ton of Snake Eye in the top cut. There was four on the first day tournament and there's even more on the follow-up. This is real. The Snake Eye meta is here. If we look on over to the tier list, which should have updated, Snake Eye just hit tier one. Barely enough using all community tournaments, just like that. Very well done. Super Heavy Samurai has just been demoted from tier one to tier two, and it may even fall even more possibly if it continues to not have the so great performance that we're seeing so far. And good job. If you want the breakdown of all the tournament topping Snake Eye deck lists, it's looking like this. I'm hoping that Elf will be here soon. Come on, uh, <laughs> Elf over the Zeus package, what's going on, huh? And uh, there you go. That is it. 50% are using the trap, that's pretty cool. And thank you very much.